Next on Startup, we head to Austin, Texas to meet up with Jessica Honiger, the owner of New Day Collection. Then we head over to Houston, Texas to meet up with Sean Baker, the owner of Tantrums. All of this and more is next on Startup. My name is Gary Brado, and I'm a documentary filmmaker and an entrepreneur. The economy is in less than perfect shape, and when the jobs go away, there's nothing left to do but get up and get creative. And there are people all over America doing just that. It's estimated that up to 85% of new businesses fail. So I'm going coast to coast to hear the personal stories of the people who beat the odds and started a successful business from the ground up. This is Startup. Handmade jewelry is the art of bringing together different components that are assembled by hand rather than using machines. Even if at some point lathes and drills are used to make the jewelry, they have to be guided by the hands of humans. The makers traditionally use materials available to them to come up with unique designs by using several different techniques. Today, I'm on my way to Austin, Texas to meet up with Jessica Honiger, the founder of Noonday Collection a company that uses fashion to create meaningful opportunities around the world. Where are you from? You know, where'd you go to school? Tell me everything. Okay, everything. Yeah. We're gonna be here Start at the top. for a long time. Okay. <laughs> High school is when I got the travel bug, and that's when I traveled to Africa for the first time, and I really saw international poverty for the first time. And then I moved to Guatemala, and so that's where I was really exposed to international development work. I um, met my husband through that process. We um, got married, moved back to Austin thinking we were gonna move overseas again, mm -hmm. but just a, a clear door didn't really open, and so we began to flip houses until the bottom fell out. Of course. And that is when we then were living off credit cards. <laughs> wow. So it was during that time of the fallout, we had decided to adopt a child from Africa. We had two other kids at the time. And in the meantime, our financial situation started falling apart, and it's very expensive to adopt internationally. So I had been connected to some friends of mine living in Uganda in East Africa, and they had said, we would love for you to create a marketplace for, for artisans there. And what you could use any money that you earn towards your adoption. We, we have this product. We got them to make it. We didn't think about the selling piece, so it's just sitting there collecting dust. Do you want to sell it? So it wasn't like you were necessarily <laughs> Necessarily passionate in the beginning about retail jewelry. No. This opportunity came up and you're like, I'm just going to sell stuff. Basically, yes, because wow. I was just going to sell anything because I was determined to get our little boy home from Incredible. Rwanda. How did you kind of put all the pieces together? When did it turn into, oh my gosh, this can be something? This has legs. Yeah. After about seven months, mm -hmm. I began to ask other women to open their home to purchase product. And women were saying yes, left and right. And then within a few months, women began to come to me and say, well, could I start a new day collection in my hometown? It was around that time I realized, this is not a fundraiser anymore. <laughs> this is a business. Right. It's a living. This yeah. is a living. And I'm about to go to Africa to get my kid and Amazing. have three kids under five. And so that's when I began to reach out to different people for advice. And one of the people I reached out to is now my business partner, Travis. I reached out to him just to get advice. And then within about a month, he said, hey, I've been saving up in order to be able to run a business someday. And I'm ready to go salary free. Do you want to? be partners. Amazing. Yes. Explain exactly what Noonday Collection is. Noonday Collection is a uh, socially responsible uh, fashion business that's creating meaningful opportunities around the globe. Partnering with artisan businesses uh, in many countries, so we're currently in 12 different countries, and we create just amazing, beautiful uh, products that we then uh, sell here in the United States through a network of independent Noonday ambassadors. Is it similar to a Mary Kay or an Avon lady that would come and do like a show in your living room and you'd buy products? 
Yeah, in short, it really it really is. Yeah. Independent vendors out there making. Yeah, yeah, and so our, our New Day ambassadors, they're very um, passionate for the mission of New Day, and they're also just, you know, great stylists as well. So it's they're, a brilliant they're, model. Yeah, they're styling uh, the women who come to the show, yeah. Talk to me about your, your typical ambassador. Who is, who is that? A lot of our ambassadors, most of them are stay-at-home moms. It's not necessarily women who are like super into fashion. It's a curious woman who wants to make a difference in the world. What are the qualifications of your makers and how are they compensated? How are they treated? Is it basically you deal with like your two people, the heads of the company over there. I mean, the primary people that we are working with are the artisan entrepreneur leaders, the Got business it. owners. We visit all of our entrepreneurial partners every year. There's someone from our product team visiting our partners and ensuring fair wages and safe working conditions. And we follow fair trade principles. And how we define that is we come alongside these businesses and we help them scale. And then we also help them with their startup costs or we'll pay a lot of times for product ahead of time. And then we also come alongside them with social impact programs that they're able to apply for grants and then we can oftentimes help them with, with scholarships, with schooling, with emergency needs. It, talk about the social impact aspect of it more. Social impact really for us is, is job creation and it's you know, in places where people have typically been left out of the market. Right. So we are specifically targeting areas where bigger companies are like, I don't have time for that, you know? So sure. we actually enjoy the headaches <laughs> that come from, you know, working in Haiti where there's suddenly violence on the way to the airport and so our shipment gets held up, you know? I mean, there's wow. so many different um, issues that we're willing to deal with because we specifically want to work in communities that are more vulnerable where a dignified job is going to have a real impact. So let's say in Guatemala, are you sending the folks in Guatemala designs and they're creating them? Or are they making traditional Guatemalan designs and sending them back? How, how does that process work? We're always looking at what are the techniques and the materials in those communities that are available. Sometimes like in Guatemala is a place where uh, there's often craft that's handed down from generation to generation. And, and you so, want to include that. So we want to include that for sure and leverage that uh, and highlight that. At the same time, our design team here is looking at the runways and they're seeing what trends are coming. So it's really bringing those two of the trends here in the United States uh, along with the traditional craft and expertise and materials that they have locally. Where did this piece come from? Oh, they're from India. From India? Yes. Now, w once it goes into the box, you do a quality check. Yeah. Then what happens? Yeah, we have to check all the pieces, all, all the little stone, everything there. You know, if they're good. It's beautiful. Yeah, we just put it in the box like that. And it's yeah. beautiful packaging. So is it done and ready to go? Yeah, this only one customer. Mm -hmm. They order two, three items, and you just put it the same box. It's perfect. Let's talk about sort of the ramp up of, of how you how you actually grew the company. I, at one point, collected gold jewelry that my mom had gifted me throughout my life, and I literally shopped everything at a pawn shop. Cash to, for gold. To go fund the website. We officed out of my home for about a, a year. So it was me, and then it was Travis and me, my business partner. And it was maybe 10 ambassadors that first year. And six years later, we're at 1,500 ambassadors, maybe three to five artists and business partners. And now we have 30. And that impacts a total of 4,000 artisans around the world, which multiplies to impact 20,000 family members. That's insane. Yeah.
How much money uh, went into to starting it, to creating it, and where did that money come from? We ended up taking two loans that were, you know, a total of $50,000. For yeah. us, uh, one of the biggest challenges on the financial side is we work according to fair trade principles. We're really trying to care for our artists and business partners. Every time we make an order, we prepay 50% of the purchase order upon uh, requesting Receipt. the goods. Oh, no, upon request. Um, upon requesting the goods. That's... And then we pay the remaining uh, balance once we receive it. Got it. It's not your typical business like uh, accounts receivable yeah. approach or accounts payable approach. Like for us, it's a negative accounts payable. What has been like the, the biggest sort of personal or emotional challenge since starting? There is a certain level of, of stamina and hustle that the first several years required. I'm so passionate about Noonday, but it has absolutely been the same commitment with raising my children. Like, it's like my fourth child. People want to start something and see success after three or four years, but it takes a lot of consistent hustle and perseverance and taking the long view. What advice do you have for other entrepreneurs out there? something on NPR and I have not been able to find it since and I've searched for it. But it was a study that was done that said entrepreneurs aren't necessarily any more risk takers than others. It's just that they believe in their success so much. It doesn't hmm. feel like risk. So people have looked at me and been so like- So insanity. Insanity. An absolute belief. You've got to already see yourself as that company that you have in your head. Thank you so much for taking the time today. Thank you, it's been fun. There are a million ways to start a business, but how did Jessica and Travis do it? Let's find out. They started the business from their own personal savings and had a revenue of $1.2 million in their first full year. They've been open since 2011 and the business is currently profitable. The one word that they would use to describe what it takes to make it in business is belief. Meeting with Jessica, Travis and their staff was really inspiring. Here's Jessica, a woman trying to adopt a child in Africa with her husband, and through a series of events, ended up starting a business that's creating dignified jobs for people all over the world. The energy in the Austin office was incredible, and you could tell that everyone was working toward the same goal, smiling, laughing, and truly enjoying their work. And I believe it's because their work has meaning. It gives people an opportunity that they may not otherwise have. It's another example that it is possible to make a living and have a positive impact on the world around you. For more information, visit our website and search episodes for Noonday Collection. A tantrum is an outburst, usually associated with those in emotional distress that is typically characterized by anger, screaming, ranting, and in some cases, hitting and other physically violent behavior. Today, I'm heading to Houston, Texas to meet up with Sean Baker, the owner of Tantrums, a business that actually encourages its customers to smash everything in sight. I cannot wait to hear her story. Tell me a little bit about yourself. I am an entrepreneur who used to be in the oil and gas industry. How long did you work in oil and gas? 25 years. Tell me about that experience. The company I was working for, they um, headhunted me for months to come work for them. They made an offer I couldn't refuse, and so I left. And 10 months later, I was laid off. I was stunned. I didn't see it coming, especially since they lured me there when I had a job. It's like a slap in the face. Yes. <laughs> I sat home for about a month. I kind of looked here and there, but and I told my husband, you know, I said I had had this idea for several years. I was too afraid to do it before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, security. You know? it, I mean, exactly. It's very, very terrifying to leave a safe, yeah. secure yeah. paycheck. Well, now I had nothing to lose. So you had no I was like, screw it, let's do it. When did it first come up? My husband and I went out to see some friends of ours play that are in a band. And so we're at the bar and some other friends come up and say, Sean, Rob, y'all need to come look at what's going on behind the bar. So we would go behind the bar. These young guys are taking all this stuff out of their trucks with their baseball bats. I mean, they had lamps, the furniture, TVs, and just knocking the crap out of it. And I just thought, I could so do that. Especially at the time, because I was still in the oil and gas industry, which is very stressful. Yeah. And 
I could see myself doing it, number one, and I thought I could see the entire city doing it. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, um, but, you know, like I said, you know, security sure. and... You have to either try this or, or, or nothing. Or nothing, yeah. It's now or never. What was step one? Looking on our state website on what I needed to be in business. Yep. You know, permits and things like that that I had to have. I actually went through um, LegalZoom. Great. And they did it all for me. They got all my permits, my licenses, everything. I don't have to do anything except write them a check. That is fantastic. And that was right up my alley. <laughs> How about a capital investment in the beginning? Did you put all your own money up or mm -hmm. did you have to get a loan? It's all you. Yeah, well that's when I found out how difficult it is for startups to get any kind of loan. Yeah. It's impossible. I told my husband, I said, you know, I'm just gonna withdraw my 401k. I'm gonna pay our house off. If something happens, we'll have a place to live. And uh, so I paid off my house and started tantrums. Tell me about the first, uh, when you got the keys to the place. I opened December 7th, which was Pearl Harbor Day. Didn't have my first customer for about six or eight weeks. Oh, no. I'm sweating. Because, I mean, I'm spending a ton of money on advertising. I'm still pounding the pavement with flyers. I mean, yep. and, um, but I can remember when I had the keys and I was just standing right here in this room, just kind of looking around at everything because everything had turned out just the way I planned. And I just started crying because I couldn't believe I was a business owner. I think it didn't matter if I succeeded or failed. It was surreal. I was still a business owner. It was something that I never, I never saw myself as. An amazing feeling? Yeah. Yeah. Explain exactly what is Tantrums. Tantrums is a place for people to come who, well, they could be stressed out, I suppose, or come just because it's fun. You don't have to be angry. But you can come in here and rent an allotted time frame and destroy the contents of a room that I'm gonna stock with dishes or TVs or windshields <laughs> or furniture. And you can take your baseball bat, sledgehammer, golf club, lead pipe or whatever and just destroy it. Fun <laughs> stress relief. Uh, it, it's kind of a sign of the times, don't you yeah, think? Yeah, pretty much. It's fun, you know, there's a serious side to tantrums too. Mm -hmm. And that are the, are the people that do come for therapy. Mm -hmm. All different types of therapy. Because I do get referrals from doctors now. Wow. According to my customers, they're referred by their doctor who saw me somewhere. Yeah. You know, they're coming for anxiety issues mm -hmm. or um, depression mm -hmm. or dealing with something, a loss in their life. That was the most surprising part because I didn't see tantrums as therapy. You thought it was something fun or yeah, release? Yeah, fun, fun is what I, that's how I promote tantrums is yeah. fun. Or you could just turn on the voice of a lawyer in the room and then... Well, the, you know, that's... I do themed rooms, and I got a call from a lawyer one day. He was like, I'm really ticked off at my judge. Can you do a courtroom? Yes, I can. Oh, that is awesome. Yes, I yeah. can. So it takes me a couple of weeks to get a themed room ready. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, courtroom. I had the judge. I had jurors. That is fantastic. The whole, the whole nine yards. <laughs> What made you come come in here and want to try something like this? Well, when I heard about the place, I just, you know, I wanted to know what, what it was like. You're angry and you want to take your aggression out on something, see if it works, and it worked. What was the experience like? Cause I'm, I'm going to try it myself. When I went in there, I was nervous. You know how you're taught when you're young not to hit stuff? Yes. Not to break stuff? So I just had to get that out of the way before I actually started smashing anything, you know? And then it just let loose that adrenaline and started kicking in and I started going and it felt more relief. What is the liability insurance like here? Well, it's high risk, number one. <laughs> when I was calling trying to find insurance, people kept telling me, well, this is ridiculous. <laughs> it was a ridiculous idea. And finally I was like, I am not the highest risk thing out there, okay? Right. I mean, bungee jumping, skydiving. Thank things. you. Come on, if they could insure a that. A theme park, it's a very elite, right. you know? Right. And um, anyway, so. I finally found someone to insure me.
What is this room right here? Is this like the prep room? This is where you pick your weapon, weapons of mass destruction, right here. <laughs> These are the WMDs That's right here, That's it, huh? right? Golf clubs, sledgehammers, lead pipes, tire iron crowbar. What's the most popular? Baseball bats and golf clubs. Golf clubs, really? Yeah. That's kind of surprising. It was surprised me too, actually. Take it down. Who breaks more, men, women? I definitely have more women customers than I do men. Okay. That's a personal observation. Sure. And most women outdo the men. Just, we, we hold a lot in. Nuts. We hold a lot of in. I mean, this is some serious damage. That right was here. done by a woman. Does <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and About this, two weeks ago. This right here. That was a guy. That was a guy? Yeah. Do you have to wear certain clothes? Do you have do you require yes. protective gear? Well, before you come, I tell everybody to wear closed toed shoes and long pants. Okay. I have that. So you're good. Safety glasses and gloves are mandatory. Okay. So you have you for you make people wear these. Yes. Although I've never been one to go out and break things, this is a rare opportunity to really blow off some steam. So I turned on Steeler's wheel, stuck in the middle with you, as loud as it can go in my headphones, and I went to town. That is a release. <laughs> I needed that. I definitely needed that. What does your family think? Your husband, your friends, your kids? I think they're surprised that I've managed to get it to where it is right now. Because I think they were a little skeptical. <laughs> and it really didn't matter what anyone said to me. Once I made up it. my mind to do this, I was going to do it anyway. What advice would you have for other entrepreneurs out there who want to do something with their life? Don't give up. Sometimes you, you are your own cheering section. Actually, a lot of the time. I don't know how many people told me this was a ridiculous idea. What was I thinking? This isn't going to go anywhere. Well, I just believed in it. And I'm just moving on forward. Thank you so much for taking the time Thank to meet you. with us today. Thank you. There are a million ways to start a business, but how did Sean do it? Let's find out. She started with around $30,000 in the bank and a credit score of 817. It cost around $23,000 to start the business that she funded with her personal savings. She started the business in 2016, and the one word that she would use to describe what it takes to make it in business is determination. This experience is not exactly what you'd expect, and it's extremely easy to get carried away when you're in the moment. You want to get the adrenaline pumping, the heart racing, and really lose control, but in a controlled environment, then this is the way to do it. I think this is a fantastic business idea that taps deep into human emotion. It's definitely one of those things that you say, why didn't I think of that? Sean discovered a common desire and found a way for people to appease that. And for those who are prone to breaking things, it's probably a great way to save some valuable items around the house. Our heart goes out to the thousands of people affected by Hurricane Harvey. And thankfully, Tantrums was not one of the businesses destroyed as a result of the storm. But as a Houston business owner, Sean is committed to helping to rebuild the community around her. For more information, visit our website and search episodes for tantrums. Everybody has fear. I, I've never met anybody who has no fear. I am afraid of everything. I just learned to go ahead anyway. It's a misconception because people are led by the whatever press or whatever to believe that these other people have no fear. So then they go, well, I, I'm no good because I'm afraid. And he clearly doesn't, or she, she's fearless, man, look at her. It's like, no, dude, they're just as afraid as you are. They just went ahead. When you have really envisioned a positive future, it helps you get to that future and keep the, your energy going when, for a hundred reasons, you want to stop. Next time on Startup, we head to Sedona, Arizona to meet up with Summer and Mike, the co-owners of Local Juicery. Then we head over to Las Vegas, Nevada to meet up with Frederick and Alfonso, the owners of Pigeon Lee. Be sure to join us next time on Startup. Would you like to learn more about the show or maybe nominate a business? Visit our website at startup-usa.com and connect with us on social media. Yeah.